Melissa, my school boy football look this season. People am ready, you know. All right then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. What a cup, which team are win the championship this season? Yo, it's a wonder if a school I go finish the league and beat now. Which you that go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people? Yeah, I just love the part of that song that says a team could rise and a team could fall. Yeah, some of that happened today. The first two semi-finalists in the Issa Manning Cup were confirmed earlier on Friday with Mona and Kingston College sealing their places from quarterfinal group one. Both teams also secured qualification for the Champions Cup quarterfinals where they will be joined by the other two Manning Cup semi-finalists and the final four in the Da Costa Cup. Let's show you what happened in the Sportsmax live commentary game. Mona High taking on San Andre Technical with Dean Smith on commentary. Carvel Banton sent off this encounter, and in the seventh minute, from a free kick, that flick on header by Rabina Gordon gave Mona the one nil advantage. Yeah, he went low at the near post, and Jaheim Williams didn't have enough. J. Lloyd Smith didn't have enough to bring it out either. Rabina Gordon, 14 goals this season. They would continue to push forward through Kishane Gordon, and he fired wide. Jaheim Williams put in a hand to it, but nothing was on it. In the 21st minute, ball played forward for Romarian Thomas. Jaheim Williams tried to take him out, but he stood ground. Played it to Denzel McKenzie, who fired home. 2-0 for Mona. And Denzel McKenzie, 20 assists, 10 goals. What a season he's having, the number 10 for Mona. Here's another look at the shot. A clean finish. Poor defending all around from St. Andrew Technical. And the keeper was trying to hold up the play, but the referee ignored his plight. Joy for Craig Butler and Kevin Jones, the principal of Mona. Mackenzie would come forward. J. Lloyd Smith was a judge to have found him, got a yellow card for it as well. Penalty spot. 12 yards, rejection, rejection from Jaheim Williams. A crucial save that would have given St. Andrew Technical a hope. They had that attempt in the second half, the free kick from Delaney White over the crossbar. They also tried to come forward here. Carlton Brown taking down Alex Xavier Good, rising to a yellow card, a second yellow sent off on the occasion but he still had calm he had the final whistle Mona having the semi yeah there you have it victory for Mona coached by Craig Butler they are through to the semi-finals of the Manny Cup. Kingston College also through to the last four, despite losing by two goals to one to St. Catherine. St. Catherine needed to win that game by two clear goals, and they led by two goals to nil. But they say the brave may fall, but they will never yield, and they didn't. On this Friday, they got a goal back, and that was enough to get them through to the semi-finals of the competition. And yeah, massive result for KC after beating St. Andrew Technical in midweek. Let's get back to St. Andrew Technical versus Mona High, though, and hear from technical director of the Mona High team, that's Craig Butler, but before him, Philip Williams, the coach of stats. Did your boys just, were your boys unable to just match the intensity of Mona High today? I, I, I think um, the goals came off of two mistakes, um, but definitely Mona was a better team on the day and uh, we have a good credit to them to put in a full 90 minutes and um, keep, us, keep us off the scoring sheet. Yeah, that's back-to-back -back games, you, you failed to, to score a goal. How concerning was the performances up front in these two games? Uh, 
Yeah, very, very concerned. I mean, um, we, we did create chances, but we didn't put any away. And against a good team such as Mona, um, who did put away their chances, you have to, to, to at least put away one of your, your chances so as to, to, to bring some amount of competitiveness to the game. Coach, you're into the semi-finals. You got it done against this very difficult and talented stats team. How proud are you? Very proud of my team, very proud of my coaching staff, very proud of Dan, very proud of the players. They played with all heart, they stuck to the, the task. We took Whisper's advice. Yes. And we did well. Yeah, you mentioned Whisper. He was actually giving some thoughts to the boys at halftime. Speak to me about his support as well as your coaching staff. Whisper is family. He, he grew up with us at Phoenix, at Mona, and we work hard together. He's always been here, his heart has always been here and he has come out and helped us a lot today, we, especially with the changes and the tactical. And um, we parked the bus, and towards the end we got the two goals we wanted, we parked the bus, the boys played disciplined. Um, Dane was excellent, you know, doing the job and not well, so, boy, a lot was on his shoulders today and he stood up and did well. So very proud of him, very proud of the team, very proud of the principal. The principal came up with the formation for today, believe it or not. Kevin Jones, top man, big coach. Rush. Into the semi-finals, into the Champions Cup. Looking forward to more from you. Remember this, Mona is still unbeaten. Still standing, still forward, and still having pride. All right, coach, all the best. Thanks. Yeah, Craig Butler there, the technical director of the Mona High team, and he has coaches left, right, and center. And for all those who are wondering exactly where Dijon Whisper Richards is on this day in sport, no, you know exactly where he is for no, not that he'll necessarily be there for much longer. Our in house football analyst, Lije Williams, joins us as we discuss schoolboy football. Lije, what a day in the Manning Cup! So much drama. Um, Mona High pretty much sailing into the semi finals. St. Catherine looked as if they would have stolen it and gotten there at one stage, and then the indomitable Kingston College spirit came to the fore. And they are through to the last four. Yeah, I mean, it is, it, it's quite a day. It's nothing less than we expected. We expected a lot of um, changes throughout the day in terms of who would be going through. Maybe we didn't expect so many changes, but it was a really good day for football. So much good football was played in both of the games. So although my prediction didn't come true, uh, I'm still quite happy with the quality of football that we saw. And I guess we can say that the best two teams from that group got through. Uh, remind me again, what was your prediction? I had Stats and Mona going through. Oh, you mean before the start of yeah, the group? The, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, fine. I think most people had that, um, that San Andrew Technical and Mona um, would get through. Let's spend some time quickly on stats, though, um, before we even talk about Mona and what they produced today. To go two games in the quarterfinal stage without scoring a goal is, for me, surprising, given what I've seen from this San Andrew Technical team this season and the quality that they possess. Is that going to be the most disappointing aspect of this exit for coach Philip Williams? Yeah, I think so because I guess you can say that for the first time that their defence wasn't the best and their attack couldn't bail them out because this is the first game in which say Andrew Technical conceded more than one goal this season and the attack couldn't get anything going and I think in the first game against Casey, the second game of the group, it was more so just St. Andrew Technical weren't able to take their chances. They created, they were patient, but they couldn't take chances. Today against Mona, I think they were just outfought. The, tactically, I don't think that they were the best either. And then at the end of it, they just couldn't match intensity. I'm glad Kimani asked that question to coach Philip Williams also. So I do think that Mona were the best team in all aspects. I don't like, I think it's really basic punditry or analysis to say that a team was just outfought or another team wanted it more. But in my opinion, I don't think that we saw anything less than that today. I think, say, Andrew Technical, they came out with their usual attacking plan. But I think that they were, they, they, they regained 10 players from last year, 10 crucial players. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the player that they lost was a player that was giving them so many magic moments last season yes. in Shaquan Satchel. And I think that they missed that a lot this season. Although that I do think and I do maintain that they probably have the best starting 11 in Manning Cup. But they weren't able to really get back his magic from last year. And I think that really 
didn't help them at all towards in this group, quarterfinal yeah, group. Yeah, that's the question I was going to ask, right? Because yes, they have retained the 10 players you pointed out from last season. But I watched that game against Kingston College and I thought to myself, this game for St. Andrew Technical was missing a superstar. That one player who would grab the game by the scruff of the neck and just come up with something special in a big moment when it is necessary. They didn't have it against KC and again, they did not have it. You look back at last season when they got to the final and the number of moments that Satchwell just took and made it his own and kept San Andrew Technical in and they just didn't have it. Let's talk a little bit about Mona High though because under pressure led against Kingston College missed a penalty ended up drawing that game missed a penalty against St. Catherine ended up drawing that game as well and here they were under pressure against one of the pre-tournament favorites and they came to the party in a big way yeah they really did but I think in terms of the matchup that we got this evening or this afternoon it just felt perfect for Mona because Say Andrew Technical, they're a team that wants to control the ball as much as possible. They want their whole thing is about control. That's what Philip Williams changed from the system last year to this season, changing from the 4-3-3, going to the 3-5-2. They just wanted more control, especially in central and wide areas. But Mona, a team that is all action, I think this game is really just summed up with control versus chaos. And in this time, this game, chaos won and Mona, they really, as I said, they dominated St. Andrew Technical in all aspects, tactically, physically. So I don't think anyone can really doubt Mona's credentials going forward. Yeah, Kingston College, St. Catherine. St. Catherine won that game by two goals to one. They led 2-0, which is the result they needed to advance to the semifinals. Kingston College found a late goal and they are the ones going through. What can you say, first of all, about St. Catherine, but also about Kingston College and this amazing fighting spirit that they have. Well, firstly, I'm saying, Catherine, this is another year where I think that they've had a good squad, they have been performing well, but just at the crucial moment, the vital moment, they have been able to make that next step because they were in the perfect position, as you said, at 2-0 to move on and go into the semi-finals for the first time in quite some time, yeah. but they just weren't able to hold on. And in terms of KC, this is probably the most grittiest or the grittiest team that I've seen in schoolboy football in quite some time because in terms of the quality, the overall quality of a team in the final eight, I would be very surprised if they were mm. even top six. Yeah. But they're the team that's making it through. They're the team that has really grinded out these results and that's exactly what they have yeah. done to even get to the semi-finals and let's see how they perform there and in the Champions Cup as yeah. well. Was there a Kingston College forward that wasn't on the roster today? One of their regulars? Yeah, yeah. One of their regular starters wasn't available and they had the red card. So they had a lot yes. of things going yes. against them in the yeah. game and they <laughs> still managed to do it. By the way, St. Catherine, I think, went down to 10 as yeah, well. They did. Yeah. Um, so it was even after a while. It, it wasn't long that St. Catherine had that one man advantage for. Yeah, and they got they managed to get the first goal yeah. with that one-man advantage, the second goal mm -hmm. when it was even, but they just couldn't hold on in them. Yeah, fantastic. Great work by um, Kingston College to get through and, of course, Mona doing their business. Um, listen, if you thought today, Friday, was exciting in the Manning Cup, then you, you'll want to see what's coming up tomorrow because it's another battle royale to see which two teams will get through from Group 1 of the competition. We'll have live coverage of the St. George's College versus Jamaica College encounter that will come up with at 3 o'clock. The pregame show starts at 2.30 and you can catch it on Sportsmax 2 and Scene TV. Download the Sportsmax app and you can catch it on Sportsmax Plus as well in this group um, we also have Tivoli and Heidel um, Tivoli if Heidel once they win they'll get through Heidel so they just need a point actually to get through St. George's College also only need a point and so it's it's really within their grasp but so to Jamaica College all they have to do is win Lejay how do you see Manning Cup final day quarterfinal action going on Saturday. Come on, man. Lift your head. Why are you <laughs> hanging your head? Lift your head. Let's go. <laughs> I, I don't bet against champions. I, I don't bet against trends, as I've said several times on this show. So I'm going to go with Jamaica College to grind out, similar to how we saw Kingston College do it. 
I'm going to go to Jamaica College to grind out a result and qualify for the semi-finals. You know that St. George's College's coach, Neville Bell, has a birthday today. Yeah. Happy, so, birth so happy birthday, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate it well tonight. <laughs> what are, are, you saying, are you saying more than you're actually saying? I'm, I, I only say what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you sound as if you're suggesting that celebrate tonight because that's where it stops well if that's what you want that's, term, what, it's, that's, what, it, that's what that's what it sounds it. like because you'll pick jc <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I can only make predictions nothing more nothing less so you think jamaica college and Hydell will get through yeah. because i i suspect that you're thinking Hydell will get at least a draw needed yeah, I, I think um, so. against Tivoli. Yeah, I think so. They've been, they've really stepped up a level and mm -hmm. their individual talent has really started to show in the latter stages of the competition. As I, as I mentioned the last time I was here, Ronaldo Barrett is a top three player in this competition and I think with that engine in that midfield that he is, he'll be able to guide them through even further. Yeah. By the way, I, I disagree with Lejay slightly. Yes, I think Heidel will get through, but I think St. George's College will find a way tomorrow to hold off Jamaica College. And I think for the first time in a long time, Jamaica College will be denied getting through to the last four of this competition. I know it's it, it's unbelievable to think that JC will not be in the final four. Um, we are all out of time. Let's have a look at the, the Costa Cup matches that's coming up on Saturday before we go to the break. It's the second set of matches in the quarterfinal round of the Costa Cup. Remember, we had the first set of matches on Wednesday and uh, yeah, on Yes, on Wednesday and yes, on Saturday, you'll have Garvey Maceo versus Cornwall College. Oh, these matches are Tuesday. These are not tomorrow's matches. These are Tuesday's matches. So, yeah, so Garvey Maceo will play Cornwall College. That will be a 2.30, 3.30 ECT. That's the next time we'll carry the Costa Cup football live. But there are matches on Saturday. All eight teams in the quarterfinal round will be in action. Let's take a break and come back with more on the Sports Mike Zone. Mariah Ramrak will rejoin us. You beauty. Let's take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> Come enjoy the show. Isa, schoolboy football. Yeah. Schoolboy football. Look, this is people. Them ready, you know. All right then.